Hello, my name is Richard Jacob, the country manager for North America from Matrix Science. And uh, today I'm going to talk about adding a single protein database to Mascot Server. And the reason you might want to add such a database to Mascot is if you have a modified or a custom or expressed protein and you want to search this in combination with a larger database, for example, Swissprot or um, a human database or whatever the species you're working with. And you want to search it with this larger database so you get better statistics and a false discovery rate, um, reasonable false discovery rate. Mascot allows you to select both the uh, custom database and, uh, for example, Swissprop and combine that in a single search. Uh, you can also use taxonomy filtering on that combined set of databases as well. Uh, obviously, the taxonomy would only apply to, in this example, Swissprop because your custom database doesn't have any taxonomy associated with it. All right, well, let's get on with this task. Uh, what we have here is a, an example protein, nerve growth factor. Um, it's got a little modification, um, but otherwise it's much the same as the standard protein database. We want to take this single protein database and uh, add it to Mascot. So in Mascot, um, we're going to go to the configuration editor and from there the database manager and uh, we can create a new database. So we give it a name. I'm going to choose Nerve Growth Factor. And we're going to use a predefined template. This is the easiest way to add a simple database. And this is an exeda, indeed a simple amino acid template. And if we look back at our database, it's important to note whether it's a protein or DNA database. As you can see, this is clearly a protein database. All right, so we've got a name. We've chosen a template. We go next. It's going to create a folder for our database in the D drive in this case. Uh, my mascot server is installed on the D drive. The default location is a C drive. It may be installed somewhere else in your system. Um, we'll take the default and create that directory. And in this case, it's a very small database, so I'm going to upload the file using our web browser. And we choose the file and upload. There we go. It's found um, our file that we uploaded. Um, quick note about the file name pattern. Um, the database was named uh, NGF underscore and then a number. In this case, I used the date 2016-02-24. And this asterisk basically just is a wild card that accepts a date. Um, and that way, if I update the database, I can just give it, a, give it a different date and it will go ahead and compress it. So I need to show the configuration details. And from this, we've got the right database and the right type. The file name is correct. So we want to choose the pass rules so that we can select an accession number from this. At the moment, the default pass rule for the simple amino acid template has selected this whole string here. And we want to go in and change that. So we've got a number of possibilities, 11 suitable pass rules. Some of them uh, have warnings about spaces in the name uh, from our Description line, we know that we're interested in one of these two values to use as the protein accession number. Um, we use this NGF underscore human there. So we'll take that, choose. And we need to do the same thing for the description. In fact, I can already see that it's by default selected the correct pass rule, but we'll just have a quick look. So again, we've got a list of possible pass rules and we know we want everything after the first space and that's this rule here. So we'll accept that. Now we need to save those settings. 
and go back. We don't have a reference file for this database. It's a single protein entry. Uh, likewise, we don't. Likewise, we don't have any version file information, or it doesn't have a taxonomy file. And we're going to accept the default performance settings, which are automatic number of threads, uh, use memory mapping, but don't lock to memory. So that's it, our database is set up, and now we can activate the database. And it's gonna go through and uh, compress the file and run a test search. And there we go, it's now in use, ready for searching. Now let's go to back to mascot and access the mascot server and we're going to do a peptide mass fingerprint. Let's select our new database, there it is. We're just going to set the standard settings and we're going to do a query. I happen to have a mass from a theoretical digest right here. I'll paste that in and ppm a little or well, the peptide tolerance a little lower to 10 ppm search is done and we've got a match so there we go that database is now accessible um, for, and ready for searching and if we wanted to search that database there we go um, with swiss prop we just select both at once and as I mentioned, we can put a taxonomy filter on that as well. And this will then search these two databases in the Swiss prop with the taxonomy settings. There you go. That's the way to add a single protein database to your mascot server. Look out for more of these uh, tutorials on the web. And uh, if you have any questions about this or mascot in general, please email support at matrixscience.com. Thank you.